Hello and welcome from inside the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio. I'm Kelsey Richardson and this is Carolina Insider. There was a horrific terrorist attack Tuesday in Brussels, Belgium. There were two explosions, one at the Brussels International Airport and the other at a city metro station. Authorities say more than 30 people were killed and almost 250 were injured. Nine of them were Americans. We are happy to report that all four USC students studying abroad in Belgium are okay. In other news, there are two can candidates in the race for president head into the weekend with even more commanding leads. Two primaries in a caucus took place Tuesday night, getting a couple candidates a little closer to clinching their party's nomination. In the Democratic race, Senator Hillary Clinton won Arizona, while Senator Bernie Sanders picked up two states, Idaho and Utah. With this win, Clinton's delicate count moves to nearly 1,700 in the Republican race. Donald Trump and Senator Ted Cruz split the states, with Trump winning Arizona and Cruz winning Utah. Mr. Trump now leads that race with 739 delegates. Next election's up, Democratic primaries this Saturday in Alaska, Washington, and Hawaii. The oldest public housing facility in Columbia is getting ready for a big change. Here with that story is Carolina Insider's Christina Myers. Christina? That's right, Kelsey. It's a change Gonzalez Gardens is in much need of. The community is about to undergo an overhaul, and everyone from those who live there to those who work there are preparing for the change. Timothy Williams feels right at home as property manager for Gonzalez Gardens, but things are changing. He's fast at work signing papers and checking emails, making sure all 274 of his residents are ready to move. My deadline to get everybody out is January 1st. Well, I'm sorry, June 1st of this year. For 75 years, Gonzalez Gardens has provided affordable housing in Columbia, but today its age is showing. The exterior is old and battered, chipped walls, tattered cabinets, and rusted bathrooms with no heat or air and only a tub to bathe in. Many residents agree it's time to go. It just ain't fit for nobody. I don't know how it been the first years they bought it out. I don't know if it was good or not, but all the years I remember of the Gonzilla Gardens eras have been bad. Recently, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development gave Columbia permission to demolish the property. According to the Columbia Housing Authority's website, Gonzalez Gardens will transform into mixed income, energy efficient housing, a transformation that is scheduled to take place later this year. The proposed $60 million plan calls for architecture similar to the Celia Saxon Home, a nearby public housing unit that was revamped in 1999. Housing officials say they're doing all they can to help make the transition smooth. We are actually working one-on-one -on -one with each family to help them find a new place to live. And Timothy Williams is helping too. He's assuring his residents that they'll create new bonds wherever they go. It's not where you live and it's, it's just how you live. Having grown up in public housing himself, he sees promise in their new beginning. And that new beginning has started for many residents Although the Housing Authority has the funds to tear down Gonzalez Gardens, they don't currently have the funds to start rebuilding. For Carolina Insider, I'm Christina Myers. Back to you, Kelsey, in the studio. Gonzalez Gardens isn't the only site facing renovation. Casey's Riverwalk is undergoing some construction of its own following last year's flood. Residents and guests of Columbia visit the Columbia Riverwalk to run, walk, rest, and ride their bicycles. Unfortunately, the walk by the river is currently limited due to ongoing construction after the flood in 2015. I think it's sad. Um, people come out here to enjoy nature and just the peace and quiet, and you can't even, I mean, everything's blocked. A lot of it's blocked off, so you don't have many options of where you can walk. Park rangers do not have specific dates, but they do know the work is progressing. Finally, we want to cheer on our top-seeded women's basketball team who will face the number four ranking Syracuse in the NCAA tournament. This is the Lady Gamecocks' third straight Sweet 16 matchup. Tip-off is tomorrow night at 7 in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. But don't worry, you can catch all of the action live on ESPN. That's it for this edition of Carolina Insider. Until next time, I'm Kelsey Richardson.